or if you have uh, had a recurrence of the ulcers, the first important thing is whenever we take antibiotics, we know that the antibiotics kill both the harmful bacteria as well as the friendly ones which are in our gut. And for that reason, any course of antibiotics should be followed up by a um, set of habits to help rebuild the friendly microbes in our gut. And those are the lifestyle um, ideas that I'd like to share. The first one is to eliminate sugar because sugar is uh, the best food for the harmful bacteria. And uh, this includes the bacterium that is associated with ulcers, which is H. pylori. So um, th that is my first recommendation, eliminate sugar from the diet as well as refined carbohydrates and opt for healthier sources of uh, carbohydrates, minimally processed. And then the other thing that is recommended to support the gut is um, making and drinking bone broth. So many of our cultures, probably all of them, have had the practice of uh, making bone broth. That is a bone that is boiled for prolonged periods uh, in water with maybe salt. And this broth can even be used in cooking, for example, in steaming vegetables or in making a vegetable soup. So bone broth is very supportive for healthy gut. And we can, if one has got ulcers or other gut related problems, this is actually a useful food to add to your diet. Because as, um, as I've said, uh, the ulcers can recur and to help your gut to be a bit stronger, you need to take some of these um, steps. Another thing I wanted to say is that for some people who have got gut issues, raw vegetable, Raw vegetables can be difficult to digest. So it is better to cook or steam vegetables rather than to eat salads or other raw vegetables because this can worsen the bloating and can actually uh, cause a lot of discomfort. So for that reason, cooked vegetables, if you can cook, it, cook them in bone broth into a soup, it's be, it will be all the, uh, the more uh, helpful. Then in addition to that, it's, a, it's useful to identify which foods are worsening the bloating. Uh, so different people will find different foods are worsening things. So each person um, might try to, to be just careful to listen on their, their own gut to see when do they, does the problem get worse and which food is associated with that. So then once you identify the trigger foods, we call them trigger foods because they trigger the issues then try to avoid them. Some of the trigger foods that people commonly find are problematic are alcohol, coffee. Some people have problems with nuts, especially raw nuts and uh, spices for some people can cause gut irritation. Then another point to, that is helpful for bloating is to opt for smaller, more frequent meals. Rather than eating a large meal, it is better to have smaller uh, meals because as you can imagine, when uh, the, the, the person is bloating, the gas is going to take up a lot of space, which means if they also ate a big meal is going to be very uncomfortable. So smaller meals, which will also be easier for the gut to digest. Then on the neo life side, we have got recommendations that are going to help with the healing the gut and also soothing the gut to minimize this bloating. The first is chelated zinc, which is very useful in healing the gut. We also have aloe vera plus, which soothes the gut and helps to dissipate the gas that causes bloating. We recommend as well cru cruciferous plus for this issue. And of course, fiber tablets can be useful, especially if you find it difficult to, to tolerate fibrous foods, let us say food, as I've said, some people have difficulties with vegetables um, when they have ulcers and bloating. So fiber tablets might be easier, but the fiber tablet is optional. You can get the, 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 the fiber from your diet if you are using cooked vegetables, certain kinds of fruits which are easier to digest, Avoid very sweet fruits because sugar, as we have said, is um, another problematic item for those who have ulcers. But of course, fruits are a better choice than uh, something like uh, refined sugar and junk food. So those are our recommendations, chelated zinc, aloe vera plus, 
cruciferous uh, plus and fiber tablets, which can help also with uh, repopulating the gut with uh, friendly microbes. Then the next question is also related and it's a frequently asked question. This is about heartburn or GERD, GERD. And um, this is another one where we can uh, uh, incorporate some of those uh, points, lifestyle points that I already mentioned. But in addition to that, avoid lying down after a large meal if you suffer from GERD. So if let us say you go to bed at nine, then your main meal should maybe be much earlier in the day so that by the time you are, it's uh, supper time or the evening meal, you eat a small meal so that by the time you're going to bed, you are, your stomach is not full, your stomach has already emptied. This is going to make the heartburn a lot less. So avoid uh, eating a large meal uh, shortly before going to bed, like, like let us say two or three hours before bedtime. Then again here, we recommend that you identify and avoid trigger food. Different people find different foods worsen the gut or heartburn. So try to identify them and avoid them until your gut is better able to deal. Uh, the third thing is limit the use of over-the-counter pain medication. So things like brufen and aspirin can actually contribute to heartburn but also to the formation of ulcers in our guts. Definitely, if you are taking them, keep them at a minimum and eat them. Do not take that, such kind of medicine in an empty stomach because it worsens their effect on the walls of the gut, which can be deteriorated. And uh, the, the heartburn can eventually also develop into ulcers. Then the supplements we recommend are uh, chelated zinc to help with the GERD. We also recommend garlic allium complex and aloe vera plus um, to help to soothe the gut, uh, in addition to those lifestyle points that I have made. Uh, in, a, in relation to this, someone also asked about using uh, aloe vera plus if they have got gastric problems or uh, digestive problems because of carbonation. We know that uh, aloe vera plus has got uh, some um, gas added into it. And some people may be nervous because they are having bloating or uh, other gut issues. So what I would recommend here is uh, if you want to take the aloe vera plus, it is not heavily carbonated. So you can easily allow the, the, the aloe vera to dissipate the gas before you drink it. And you can keep to the dose that is recommended, which is 100 ml uh, in the evening. So this, uh, you can put your, your measure of aloe vera plus and let the gas dissipate and then take it. The, the, the benefits of aloe vera will probably outweigh the, the possibility that the, the bubbles are going to cause problems. So that is uh, in connection to the carbonation of aloe vera plus. I have not myself experienced someone who struggled with this. Many people benefit from using aloe vera plus when they have got issues like heartburn, and other digestive irritations of their digestive system. Mm, then moving on, uh, two questions about cancer, which uh, I always find rather tragic because by the time a person has been uh, diagnosed with cancer, then uh, it's a very serious issue. And our ability to help is very different from person to person. So for that reason, the first question was uh, someone who has stage three ovarian cancer and was wondering how they can reverse it or put it in remission. This is a very uncertain, different uh, cancers, different people react in different ways. So we cannot promise that we are going to be able to help. What we can do is to recommend that they follow a healthy diet and lifestyle and to minimize their toxin load and to recommend our the supplements we always recommend for cancer support, which is phytodefense. If they are not able to take the whole of the phytodefense um, mix, they can at least take cruciferous plus that helps uh, a lot more with this different uh, with the um, cancers of this kind, the ovarian cancer, and so on. So cruciferous plus, if possible, phytodefense, and then in addition to that, omega three salmon oil and Neolife tea can be our recommendation to get, this is to supplement a healthy lifestyle 
And again, to say that uh, by the time the cancer has reached stage three, it is quite well on its way. And uh, our hope for, for reversing or putting it in remission is limited. So uh, the other question was about colon cancer in someone who is undergoing chemo. Again, the recommendation will be phytodefense, uh, then vitamin D. And I find that vitamin D can actually be very relevant because maybe the person has been too sick to get much sun exposure. And we are even as we speak, finding more and more wonderful effects of vitamin D. So because many sick people are not are too sick to go outside and spend time in the sun, maybe they're in hospital, then uh, they may need to supplement with vitamin D, which can be useful. And if their appetite is poor, as we, in this question, the person is undergoing chemo, they may find Neolife Shake useful in supporting their uh, food intake because sometimes they may have sores in their mouth that makes it hard to eat or their appetite may be poor or they may be nauseous. So Neolife Shake can also be useful in that case. Again, as I said, uh, cancer is an illness where prevention is much, much, much better than cure. And I think more and more information is available for some of the things that help to reduce our risk. And of course, uh, for those who have been attending our training for a while, you know that we have a separate session about cancer support where we have more information about how to support ourselves. If we have maybe a family member or a family history of cancer, what we can do to preempt it. But uh, our main supplement for cancer situation is the phytodefense. We can uh, add there either new life shake, vitamin D or omega-3 uh, salmon oil can also assist. But phytodefense is a superstar of uh, our cancer support. Um, the next question, was about someone who is uh, struggling to conceive. She had been using the injection Dipoprovera contraceptive for a while and now would like to conceive and is finding it difficult. So here I wanted to give uh, uh, a piece of information that uh, people who are using Dipoprovera injections, uh, they can experience um, delay in, concept, in conceiving for quite a while, it can be up to two years or more. So this, is, this means that they need to be patient because this particular contraceptive does have quite an effect on delaying uh, conception because it takes time for the body to get rid of the effects of uh, the contraceptive and uh, then restore its uh, hormonal balance and then be ready to conceive. So this is uh, already something which is um, knowledge that is there, that uh, this uh, contraceptive that is injected tends to affect con concept conceiving in that way. So it's not just this particular person. It's something that has, is uh, fairly well uh, known to happen. So uh, on the new life side in helping this person, the first we'll recommend is herbal feminine complex to help with reestablishing the normal uh, hormonal balance of uh, the woman. We also recommend 3NN for cellular health. We recommend beta guard to help in detoxing from the uh, hormone, ho hormone that might be still lacking in the system. And we recommend chelated zinc. Uh, for older women, here I do not know the age group in which the question uh, originated, but for older women, co coenzyme Q10 may also be useful because uh, we are aware that as we women get older, conceiving becomes difficult. And once we reach the age of 35 and on, then our ability to conceive is progressively re reducing, especially first time, uh, the first time conceiving but even other conceptions might be delayed. So uh, if it's an older mom, then we are recommending they can add coenzyme Q10, but uh, our recommendation is herbal feminine complex, 3NN, beta guard, and zinc. Then um, the next question was someone wanted to know about what to recommend for gout. So gout is a painful condition in which uh, crystals of uh, uric acid collect in the joints, especially the joints of the big two. Uh, mm. 
So this will help with gout, of course, uh, good uh, dietary choices, adding vegetables to the diet and uh, other healthy fats and so on will all help out. But uh, from the supplement side, we recommend flavonoids, omega-3 salmon oil and vitamin D if the person especially does not get uh, adequate sun exposure. Because we are now more involved, although here in Africa, we in most regions, we are able to get uh, enough uh, sun. But remember, we have to actually go out in the sun with the skin exposed in order to benefit from the sun. I was just thinking about my son who went out today to, to be in the sun, but he was wearing a long sleeve t-shirt, a long sleeve jacket, long trousers, shoes. So the, and, and uh, the only place, part of his body that is visible to the sun is his face, which is a bit too little. So when I say sun exposure, I do mean that at least put on short sleeves and maybe shorts uh, in order to get sun, the enough uh, skin exposed because the, the vitamin is manufactured in the skin when the sun is uh, exposed, the, the skin is exposed to the sun, sorry. So that is gout. Then another question was uh, about what to recommend for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, just to say that a large percentage of Alzheimer's is related to diet, to the diet that we take. And when we think what a serious illness Alzheimer's is, I think we should take care that we avoid being in the risk, uh, risk zone for Alzheimer's. And uh, so I'll mention some lifestyle points and then we look at the supplements that we recommend. So first of all, eliminate sugar and lower carbohydrate intake because Alzheimer's in fact has been described as type three diabetes. So it's like diabetes except it is affecting the brain. So by eliminating sugar once again, as I've said in the previous point, we can only improve our health and reduce carbohydrates, especially refined, excessively refined carbohydrates. Then another important thing for this is um, have a minimum of eight hours of sleep because the brain detoxes itself and recovers during deep sleep. And uh, you will remember from our session on sleep that we need a minimum of eight hours. So a person who has uh, Alzheimer's should get the adequate amount of sleep to give the brain time to detox itself and to recover itself. Then the third point is that the person should eat fish three times a week at least. And um, also another useful item is to socialize more and learn new skills. One of the things that makes uh, the deterioration in Alzheimer's very fast is social isolation and uh, lacking opportunities to learn new skills. So socializing and uh, learning new things, it can be skills that maybe a person used to have before and doesn't has lost them, or maybe learning something that um, they, they can easily learn that they don't know. This can even be improved if they are learning it in a social situation, maybe with the help of the family and so on. So those are the lifestyle points, eliminate sugar and lower the carbohydrate intake, get the required amount of sleep, eight hours minimum, eat fish three times a week minimum, and socialize and try to learn new skills. Then Neolife is going to be very helpful with the um, mind enhancement formula. And then we also recommend omega-3 salmon oil and either lipotropic adjunct or vitamin B complex. So one of the two lipotropic adjunct has quite a number of the B family. So you can opt for that or you can uh, use vitamin B complex and 3NN. So those are the ones we recommend. If the person has got sugar issues, let us say pre-diabetes, maybe they've been, they, they should check that their, blood, their sugar metabolism is okay. If it is uh, either on the border or problematic, then it is important to add botanical balance to the mix. So I know that is about uh, what, four or five supplements, but as you can imagine, Alzheimer's is very serious. 
So not only do I recommend that we use those supplements, but also that we prevent. If you already have either a family history of diabetes or you're already a diabetic person, the effect will not be limited to the organs that we are normally aware of, like the kidney and so on. It can go so far as to lead to Alzheimer's and other kinds of dementia. So um, botanical balance is going to help as we improve our habits by eliminating sugar, lowering carbohydrates, getting good quality carbohydrates and eliminating processed carbohydrates, which contribute to so many health problems. Then the next question, I think, or two were about, no, it was one. Okay, the, the next question was about lupus. So lupus is an autoimmune illness uh, autoimmunity is when our immune system mistake, mistakes our tissues for enemy uh, cells and starts attacking them. Uh, autoimmune illnesses, as you might be aware, comes in very many forms. And lupus itself comes in a number of forms. So some people's lupus affects their <clears throat> kidney, so they have kidney problems. Some people, it manifests itself as skin rashes. And in some people, it manifests as chronic fatigue or muscle and joint pain. So all these are ways in which lupus can manifest itself. So uh, the way in which we go about supporting people with lupus is starting with lifestyle to support the immune system. This starts with gut health because the, the problems to do with autoimmunity originate from an unhealthy gut, which uh, allows uh, foods that are not properly digested to percolate into the system, out of the gut into the, the body's systems. And when uh, such food items get into our blood circulation or in our, in our blood vessels, what is going to happen is that our, our, our immune system is going to think that we are being attacked by a harmful microbe and will have an immune reaction that will start there, but will start attacking a variety of uh, body tissues. So that is why I'm saying that our first step is to support gut health in whenever someone has an autoimmune illness. The next is to avoid certain foods that uh, are difficult for the gut. <clears throat> this includes dairy for some people and uh, grains, especially wheat. So if uh, you have a family history of autoimmune illness, uh, or already have an autoimmune illness, then you need to reconsider whether how you can eliminate dairy products from your diet and minimize grains from your carbohydrate mix. So things, uh, as I said, especially wheat, and you can opt for other alternatives rather than grains for, to support your gut. Also, uh, as I said, when you have gut, one way in which uh, gut issues manifest is that you may have difficulty in eating raw vegetables. So for that reason, opt for cooked or steamed vegetables. And as I said, eliminate uh, problem foods, uh, processed foods, alcohol, tobacco, all these can worsen autoimmune illness. Uh, sun exposure can be helpful but people whose lupus manifests as skin rashes may find that the sun makes things worse. So if you, the person is in this category, then rather than uh, sun exposure causing problems with the rashes, maybe you can then uh, add vitamin D to supplement because the vitamin D will be helpful. But if you get it from the sun and you're having issues, the lupus issues are being worsened by the sun, it will not be a good idea. So then in your, on the Neolife side, we are recommending Provitality. For, this is for lupus. We are recommending Neolife tea, chelated zinc, and vitamin D, as I said, if um, the person cannot get sun exposure as a, because the lupus is made worse, or for whatever reason, then uh, vitamin D is also helpful with, um, the, with lupus. Then the next question was, about um, an article that someone received where it indicated that some research has shown that omega-3 salmon oil can cause a stroke or heart problems. 
And uh, again, as I um, hear what I'd like to state is that whenever we come across um, some of these uh, uh, ideas, maybe on, on a TV program or on some uh, internet uh, something, I think in this age of information, we can scrutinize the sources of uh, such news or information and find out if they are credible studies that have been taken because there are all kinds of different people with different agendas out there giving their information. So I want to remind all of us that we have got the scientific advisory board, which makes sure that our products are going to be giving value and better health rather than causing problems. So omega-3 salmon oil has been very well researched and uh, it does the opposite of causing strokes and heart attack. It actually helps. This is not new information, it is quite well established. So before we throw out our omega-3 or run into a panic, let us remember that we actually have a scientific advisory board that is manned by excellent scientists who are at the cutting edge of their professions. And they are the ones who advise us on how and which products to have in our mix and how they are going to help. And um, so the, maybe I'm not saying that there might not absolutely be a problem. What I'm saying is that uh, I would like to scrutinize the source of the information and the credibility of those studies uh, in order to make a judgment. And in addition to that, I would recommend that um, one thing I can say is that uh, we cannot use omega-3 salmon oil and then continue with nasty lifestyle uh, pro, uh, habits which contribute to heart issues. So the, the taking of omega-3 is not to make you bulletproof for bad dietary habits. So for that reason, what I can say is um, apart from taking your omega-3, you need to opt for healthy fats. So for example, olive oil, avocado, and so on, ghee, and so on, and avoid the factory-made seed oils, which are actually seriously problematic to our health. And uh, in addition to that, with the omega-3 salmon oil, stay within the recommended dose. Uh, rather than taking uh, uh, lots and lots of omega-3 salmon oil, take the recommended dose and use it as a supplement to en uh, embarking on good, healthy uh, diets and uh, a lifestyle that is supportive of heart and blood vessel health. So I think the only thing I can give there is that we should not give the impression that once a, a, a client is using omega-3 salmon oil, they can then just go about um, doing all the harmful uh, things that will lead to problems. We are supposed to educate as well as uh, provide the product. So that is all I'm going to say about that question. Then the next question was uh, about someone who had a torn tendon on their shoulder. So here, um, the lifestyle points that I can, I can suggest there is maintaining a good upright posture, especially when sitting down, because uh, one of the things that lead to shoulder problems is uh, sl slumping when we are sitting down. And also, of course, certain kinds of sports that use uh, the shoulder joint repetitively. For example, if you're a tennis player, a golf player, some of these can actually uh, cause the tendon to tear and cause a lot of pain and uh, so on. There are some surgical interventions that can help. But um, I also recommend that you can see a physiotherapist or a chiropractor who can recommend exercises and massages to support um, the shoulder joint as it uh, repairs itself. But uh, if the problem is very bad, then maybe you can discuss with your doctor the possibility of um, if there is a, a, an intervention that can be done if the tear is very bad. Okay, then, uh, so for that reason, what we'll recommend for the person who is having this issue of the torn tendon is uh, full motion, calmer, and vitamin D if they have got uh, low sun exposure 
as well as omega-3 salmon oil. So if they have got adequate sun exposure, then simply full motion, Calmag and omega-3 salmon oil will help them. And as I've said, uh, it's good to consult the doctor if the tear would be able to heal on its own or if uh, there is uh, a need for other intervention. Then um, the next question was about epilepsy. So here the, um, the issue was seizures and I think the person would have been maybe diagnosed with epilepsy. So seizures don't always mean epilepsy. So I'm hoping that in this case, they have um, seen a doctor and established the cause of the seizures. And uh, on the lifestyle side, we recommend lowering carbohydrates drastically and uh, actually using high fats in their diet. This helps with people who have epilepsy or seizures. Uh, they should eliminate all sugar and all refined carbohydrates from their diet and keep even the healthy carbohydrates at a minimum. So their diet will be heavier on fat, healthy fat and um, low on carbohydrates and uh, adequate in terms of their proteins. Then uh, with the supplements we recommend to them is magnesium complex. We'll also recommend vitamin B complex as well as vitamin E or wheat jam oil. Wheat jam oil is rich in vitamin E. So uh, whether if you have vitamin E or if you use wheat jam oil, it's going to supply us with uh, that uh, supplement. So I see that uh, my time is up. And uh, I think we have gone through quite a number of the questions and we can <coughs> carry the remaining ones to the next Q&A. As I said at the beginning, you have a if you have a question that you would like to be answered more urgently, then I invite you to send me. I think the number is usually available or you can get it from your head office and you can uh, simply send me the question and I'll send you the answer if you cannot wait for your ne our next Q&A. So with that, I want to thank you very much for your time this evening. I hope you have found uh, the information that we have had useful in your own personal capacity, capacity as well as uh, maybe thinking about how to position yourself in um, supporting your business and your clients. Now I want to hand you over to Pascal, who is right here beside me, ready to take you through the next